So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the pre-certification informational session. My name is Sanji Franklin. I am the certification manager here at GMSDC. I am the person that you will be uh, probably reaching out to uh, should you decide to move forward with your application. I will also be the person that will be conducting the uh, desk review once you submit your application and will also be conducting all site visits. So once you've completed your application and we've completed the desk review, I will also conduct your site visit to close out the application. So welcome to everyone. Thank you for being a part of today's presentation. Uh, today I will walk you through the application process so that you can become familiar with how to fill out the application uh, from start to finish. We will also have a question and answer session uh, after each section has been presented. And then lastly, we will also go over the documentation that is required based on uh, each business structure. So I'll also go through the documents so that you can understand what is needed. I will also explain what you can submit in lieu of a document should you not have that particular document. And we'll also go over the benefits of being certified and give you a basic overview of who GMSDC is and what we are and what we do. Okay, so thank you very much. So before you start, uh, this is the GMSDC website. For those of you that have not gone to our website yet, this is where you would go to start the application process. Uh, from time to time, people will go to our national website. Uh, there are no applications available on the national website. So uh, if you are headquartered here in Georgia and your business is located here, then this is the uh, uh, council, the local council that you will need to get certified with. If there is anyone on the call that happens to be certified with another council outside of the Georgia area, then you would not get certified with us. You would apply for what is called a subscription service. You would not need to go through the presentation with us. Okay, so this is the website. This is all where you get started. And it is very simple. Ms. Franklin. Yes. Just a moment. I want to make sure everyone can see the website. There's a comment that they're unable to see the presentation. Want to make sure everyone is able to see the presentation. Yeah, if you have called in, um, you will not be able to see it. So make certain that you are able to see the screen. Uh, I am sharing the screen right now. So uh, what I would suggest that you do, so maybe you might need to log out. Uh, go back into the email that I sent to you that and at the very bottom it will say join and you will be able to join and from there you should be able to get back in and you should be able to see the screen and should be visible to you. Right now we're all on the GMSDC website. Okay. So when you start uh, from the website at the very top you'll see the header that says get certified. You'll click on that header. The drop down box will say certification criteria. You'll click on certification criteria and then it will take you to a landing page. OK, that is the certification page. It will give you information in regards to certification criteria. As well as how to actually log in. So we're going to start first with. The benefits of certification, OK, uh, and the process. So the certification process is basically uh, four steps um, and we'll go into that in, in more detail, but it is four steps. You'll you complete the application. There is a desk review. Um, if there is any additional documentation, we'll reach out to you. Uh, if all of the documentation has been approved, then you will receive an email from me letting you know that your site visit will need to be conducted. After that, then the application goes to our committee, our certification committee. Uh, for consideration of, and approval. Once I receive the approvals, then your application um, is then, I'm sorry, you'll receive an email from me letting, me letting you know that it's been approved. And from there, you'll attend an orientation. And after the orientation, you'll receive an email letting you know that you can now access your application. So we'll go into that a little further, but that is the basic um, outline of the certification process. It will typically take 
from start to finish from the date of submission. Uh, the desk review will begin within maybe 15 to 17 days. Um, and then from there, the entire process can take up to 30 days. We also have an expedited service, so that is an additional fee uh, in addition to the normal processing fee for certification. So that's just a basic overview of the, the process of getting certified. And we'll go into that in more detail. Um, the benefits of certification, um, Georgia's top corporations, they look for diverse suppliers. Um, our suppliers, once you are certified with us, your information is then entered into a database for both national and local um, uh, sourcing requests. So our sourcing requests are one of two ways. Our, our corporates either send requests to us or they can go into the database and they can search for you. And so the searches are conducted based on NAICS code or product service description. And when we go through the application today, you will see that information there. That is also very important because your NAICS codes and you, uh, will also appear on your certificate. And that is the primary way that when our corporates as well as our staff internally will go in and search for you. So it's important that that information is relevant and up to date at all times. Uh, many of our MBEs have access to corporate buyers and decision makers. Uh, we also have corporate procurement opportunities that are available to certified only suppliers. So that is both on a local and national um, a database. So once you're certified with us, you will have access to local events. Uh, right now, due to COVID-19, many of our events that we are conducting are being done virtually as well as on a national uh, basis. But you do have access to national uh, events and programs um, that they have and resources as well. Uh, one of the other benefits of being certified with our organization is that once you are certified with us, uh, you can actually apply for what is called a subscription service. And so I think that pretty much distinguishes us from a lot of other certifying entities because it allows you to expand your reach beyond your local region. So for instance, if you're certified with GMSDC and you want to do business, um, say New York City or in California or in um, New Orleans, you can do so by applying with a local council there and with, for the subscription service. And so it allows you access to specific services directly from that council as if you were certified and be in, in that region. So that is something that I believe um, distinguishes us from other uh, certifying entities, for instance, government and municipal certifications. You can only bid locally. And so with us, you have more of a reach. You can spread your tentacles out and you're not locked into one geographic region. Okay, so that is something that we offer to all MBEs once they're certified. Um, you also have access to exclusive member only benefits, um, such as networking and matchmaking activities. Uh, where you can meet potential business partners and also build relationships. I also want to stress that building relationships in this organization is vital to your success in the organization itself. Uh, most of the platforms and the resources as well as the events that we have are available to you so that you can network and start building those strategic relationships that you need in order to leverage your certification. We also have our MBIC industry group leadership, which consists of our veteran MBEs that have been certified with us for several more years. And they represent all of the products and services that our MBEs offer, such as government, government services, information technology, professional services, uh, as well as transportation logistics, construction. You can join as many groups as you'd like. They are there as an extended arm of GMSDC to help our MBEs in terms of um, getting through the process as well as identifying um, corporate partners that they want to work with as well as creating synergy between each other. So one of the things that we do track each year as well is MBE to MBE business. So it's also important for you to also start doing business with other MBEs. Uh, many times as you're going out trying to identify corporate partners that want to use your products or services, it's also important that you begin 
uh, doing business with other MBEs. We have MBEs here in our organization that gross have with, with gross annual revenues anywhere from startup up to over a billion dollars of capital. So these are viable, sustainable businesses right here within the organization that you can be doing business with as well. And we offer you many platforms for you to also be able to network with fellow MBEs to do so. We also have uh, our GMSDC Academy trainings uh, and programs which are available to certified MBEs only. Uh, we also give out scholarships, uh, partial scholarships to uh, continuous business education programs such as Kellogg and Tuck. Um, and we also are recognized nationally throughout our network with some of the most well-known Fortune 500 companies um, throughout the United States. So you have a lot of benefits in regards to being certified uh, with our national organization. Okay. So we're going to scroll down um, so that you can see what the criteria is. I also want people to understand that um, our certification is based on um, ethnicity. So a lot of times I will have women that say, I'm a woman, I'm a minority, but you have to belong to one of the ethnic groups that we deem certifiable uh, as per NMSDC. So the certification criteria basically is majority ownership. You cannot own less than 51% by one or more qualifying ethnic minority. So in other words, if you are the only ethnic minority and you own 100%, you meet the criteria. If you're an ethnic minority and you own 51% and you own it, own the business with a non-minority, we need to be able to see and prove that you own and operate at least 51% of the business through the documentation, the application, and everything that you supply to us. So you cannot own less than 51%. You also need to demonstrate that you are in control and you are uh, overseeing all of the day to day operations, not only within yourself, but if you have employees overseeing all of those uh, key employees and you must be the key decision maker in the company as well. Okay. You must also hold the highest designated titles such as chairman, CEO or president or principal in the company. You cannot be a vice president or a secretary. Uh, you will not be able to meet the criteria for certification if you hold that title. Okay, the business must also be headquartered in Georgia. I would like to stress that many uh, of the corporate corporate businesses do come through um, being sort of I'm sorry being um, organized in the state of Delaware. If that is the case for you, you need to make certain that the business is headquartered in Georgia to qualify for our certification. And you must file a certificate of authority with the state of Georgia or the Georgia Secretary of State. So that is one of the documents that you will need to submit in the, in the document section. And last, your business must be a for-profit. You cannot be a non-profit organization. Also, you need to be uh, either a U.S. citizen by birth or by naturalization. You cannot be a resident alien or green card holder to become certified with us. You will not you will not meet the requirements, okay? Only a US citizen or a citizen by naturalization it can qualify for our certification, right? So we define ethnic minorities, Asian Pacific Islander, um, and you'll see all the different origins. I won't go into them because there's quite a few. Uh, African American, Hispanic, you cannot have origins in Spain or Portugal. Okay, you are not eligible if you have origins from Spain or Portugal. Uh, we also certify Native Americans, which include American Indians, Eskimos, Aleuts, and Native Hawaiians. Uh, and for those of you that are Asian Indian, your origin must be from either India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. We do not certify anyone from the Middle East. Okay, that is the NMSDC's requirements, right? If anyone has any questions regarding the ethnicities that I mentioned, uh, you can always send me an email and I will be um, announcing my email address to everyone at the end of the uh, presentation today, okay? So that is the very first part of the, um, the website when you log in and now we'll scroll down to the process as I mentioned before. It's three steps. The pre-cert information session, you complete the application, submit all of the documents, 
Um, and then there's the desk review, which I will conduct. If all the documents are in place, the next step is the field audit or the site visit. After that, the applications go to the committee for approval. Once I get the approval, uh, you will receive notification from me that your application has been approved and that you'll need to attend the MBE orientation. Uh, and then after that, our MBE services manager will also have um, additional um, resources available to you, as well as engagement with the industry groups, as I mentioned be uh, before. Okay. okay, and so this is where you will start the application. So if you notice, um, it'll say click in uh, for login request. Um, I think I'm, I'm logged in, so it's not going to show you. But what you'll do is you'll click in, click on this orange field, and then it'll say login request at the very top. And I'm just going to scroll up real quickly so that you can see that. Um, the login request, you'll need to fill out the information with your email, your address, um, and all of the other pertinent information that's required. Once you've filled out the uh, registration form, then you'll receive a confirmation email from our portal letting you know that your uh, information is um, good for use and you can go ahead and log in and start the application. So before you start the application, there is a pre-qualification uh, section that you'll need to fill out. I think it consists of maybe four questions. Um, and once you've completed those four questions, then you'll be able to move forward with the application. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the application, which I have open. It is one of our applications that we use for a presentation. Um, and then you'll see that there are uh, all of the sections in the application for you to start. So basically, there are really about maybe four sections. You have your general information, as you can see here in orange, followed by ownership information, product services, references, and then lastly, the, the documentation. So that is exactly uh, five sections, but it's the, the last two sections are very short. Okay. So the first sec part of the sec uh, application is the information, uh, your firm's legal entity name. So that is the name that you have on your certificate of organization uh, that was supplied to you from the Georgia Secretary of State. And you'll need to put the firm's legal name right in the field to the left here. If you are doing business in any other name than the legal entity's name, so that would be a DBA or also known as a fictitious business statement, you would need to put the information in in the field provided. Now, if you are doing a DBA, it has to be legal. So in other words, it has to be filed uh, with your local county. There is a fee uh, for a DBA. You will just need to call your local county a business office and ask them how to apply for a DBA. Typically, it's just a short form that you'll need to fill out uh, with a nominal fee. And then I don't know what the turnaround time typically is. But if you are do using a DBA, you must have record on file with your local uh, business county. Okay. Right next to that, to your left, your federal employer ID number. That is your tax uh, uh, tax ID number please make certain that you fill in the number incorrectly because once that number is in, um, I cannot change it. I would need to contact our national office to be able to go in and delete it so that you can uh, enter in the correct number. So please, uh, if you have your records available when you're filling out the application, please make certain that you look at your EIN number prior to entering the information, okay? Because once you save it, it's locked in, all right? Office telephone number, fax number, if you're still using a fax. Uh, if you're not using a fax number, of course, it's not required. You can just put in all zeros as if it were a telephone number. And then to your right, you see website. So it's important at this point, if you're going to do business with corporate partners, that you have a website. It doesn't have to be a uh, well put together website, but it needs to be something so that when, when you go on maybe even a landing page, we can see that your business actually exists. It should tell who you are, it might even list your NAICS codes, uh, also your contact information, and a description of what it is that you do. Okay, so a lot of websites, you can do them yourselves, your templates, you can drop them in. 
Uh, but in this case, if you do not have one, you would just simply type in www.nowebaddress.com. And I'm going to type that in real quickly. So that'll be www.nowebaddress. No, okay. So that is what you would put in place if you currently do not have a web address, because if you look at the very top next to the word website, there's a red asterisk. Anything in the application with a red asterisk, you must apply information there. So that is one way to, um, uh, if, you're not, if you don't have a web address, you can just put that in and that lets me know there's no web address. Um, for everyone that does have a web address, uh, a website rather, I do go into each of the websites to review and take a look at it. Okay, so uh, just be mindful that as you come into this arena that corporate's one of the first things when you speak to them, uh, even when you're just building relationships and you give out your card, the first thing people will do will go to your website to see who you are and what you do as far as your products and services and what you're offering. Okay. Okay, so right below that, you'll see your address information. This must be a physical address. We do not accept PO boxes. In fact, I don't think it will even allow you to move forward if you put in a PO box. Uh, for those of you that um, are working from your home, you'll see at the very bottom here, it'll ask you what type of um, uh, business um, facility is it? Is it a home office? Is it a business park? Is it a strip mall or virtual office? Okay. Um, typically, what we reserve that for, as far as knowing what type of facility it is, was when I did the site visits. So, if you were a home based business, typically site visits were conducted at the GMSDC office. And if you had an office space, uh, we would come out to your uh, place of business. And then, for those that had virtual offices, they would also come into the GMSDC. But in this case, uh, just for your information, uh, due to COVID-19, we are conducting all site visits virtually. Okay, so we're doing that either uh, via FaceTime, Google Duo, or Zoom. Okay, so when I reach out to you for your site visit, I will ask you your preferred method uh, for the site visit. Okay. Oh. If there's anyone that has a mailing address, you'll put in your mailing address. If not, you'll check the box. Um, and then it'll also ask you what is the reason for having a mailing address. Right below that, it asks for your contact information. That is for the primary owner, the 51% or more, a majority shareholder in the company. So you'll put your information in, first name, last name, your title, your phone number, your mobile number, email. If there is a secondary contact that you would like for us to reach out to, uh, and also, when we're sending out our weekly e-newsletters, we might have a secretary or an executive assistant that you'd like to stay apprised of all of the information that we send out. You would supply their name and information uh, as a secondary contact. If there is no one besides yourself, you would just leave that field blank. Okay. Business information, your geographic market, that is also very important because that lets us know the territory uh, that you would be able to do business in. So, for instance, um, many of our corporates um, if, like Coca-Cola or Lowe's or Home Depot, if they have what your product or service, uh, they might want to utilize it um, across the United States. So in that case, you would hit national if you can serve across the United States. If you can only do business locally, that would only be Georgia. So you would hit local. Doing business regionally, that would be the Southeast region, and international would be the United States and abroad. Okay, there's no um, penalty for what you choose. It just helps us in terms of when we're doing searches for sourcing requests, we know how far you can actually extend yourself in terms of the territories where you can serve and do business. Okay, and then we ask, has your firm ever applied for certification before? Yes or no? The reason why we ask this question, if it is yes, uh, if you have for any reason been denied certification by us, it will need to have at least one full year 
from the date of the denial before you can apply for certification again. Okay. If it does not apply to you, it's not applicable, you will just simply hit no. Okay. If there are any other certifications that you have, you'll see in section 1.5, uh, there are quite a few. You'll just go ahead and check the one that um, uh, you have. Uh, if you do not have any of the certifications, then you'll click that very last uh, field at the bottom that says none of above. All right. Then we ask for your sales, your annual sales. Uh, this is taken directly from, oh, I'm sorry, went too far up. Uh, your sales are taken directly from your uh, tax return. Let's go to, please excuse me, this is live. Um, let me scroll down, there we go. Annual sales, yep. Taken directly from your tax return, so your 2019 2018, 2017. Um, so if you've been in business less than a year, you would not have, for instance, a startup, you would not have um, business tax returns. In this case, you would supply to us your personal tax returns. And in the annual sales field, um, you would put in a number for how many employees you have. So for instance, if you are a single member LLC or single member corporation, we ask that you put in $10,000. Our national office is asking that no one puts in zero. Um, I don't know if it'll allow you to even move forward if you put zero sales um, as your, your gross annual income. And then you'll add um, $10,000 accordingly for each each year, okay, as, as, as for the years that you've been in business, all right? If it's only one year and you start in 2018, then you only enter for 2018, okay, and so forth, all right? Then your company size, number of full-time employees, you are also considered an employee of your company. So if you are the only person in the business, you would hit one for yourself, and then you'll also hit one for yourself as a full-time employee. So if there are several or more employees, you would just uh, fill in the appropriate number um, as requested, and then you will just move forward for a part-time as well as your 1099 employees. And then at the very bottom, we ask for a Dun and Bradstreet number. Uh, so for those of you that do not have one, um, I think there is no cost to apply. I think I had an MBE that followed up with me the last time I mentioned that there is no fee for it. Um, and I also received some information on how to go ahead and apply. So if you need to find out about a Dun and Bradstreet number, I can send you the information. But the Dun and Bradstreet number is used by a lot of our corporate partners because it is also a snapshot of your business. It's almost the same as a credit report. It lets them know how you've done business, uh, how you are in terms of paying back or, or anything that you do in terms of, uh, of, of how it relates to your company. Okay, so that's what it is. It's basically a credit snapshot of your business. And so for anyone that wants the information, please send me an email um, and I will send the uh, information to you as well. Okay. So we're going to open up the floor, Ms. Um, Oliver. Uh, if anyone has questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. I'll take about five questions as we move through uh, so that I will keep you here all day uh, going through the um, certification process. Ms. Franklin, speak, we have been we answering speak questions okay. on, on chat. Okay. So I would, I would want to also refer everyone to the chat um, to see if your question has been answered there. The, the okay. chest not it's not visible to mine right now. All right, so so what started. I would ask, okay, not a problem. So what I would ask is if you have a question, if you can raise your hand, and then I can call you since we have so many people on the line. So where is your hand raising at? Well, you're, <laughs> sir, you're already there, so why don't you go ahead and speak, sir? Okay, okay. I just have a question. Please your name. Please uh, your name Dr. James, for Dr. James Robinson. And I'm with uh, KDI Group, and I'd like to know regarding the yes. stock ownership, the 51%, if my wife and I, who is African American, if we jointly own 75% of the stock, is that uh, acceptable? Yes, because you, you'd be above the 51%. So there's specific documents that you need to supply to us um, to show and prove that you do own the, the 75%. 
So is that it, it, is that is that voting stock as well? Yes, it's common stock voting okay. stock. If I have if I have thirty six, and she has thirty five uh, percent, or it comes up to seventy five percent of the business. Um, okay, that as long as disqualify me. Now, are you ethnic minority or not? Yes. Yes. We're no, so you should be fine as long as as long as the fifty one percent adds up for both ethnic minorities. So if you're both ethnic minority and you own seventy five percent, then yes, you would meet the, rec okay. the 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 criteria. Very good. Actually, all the stock is owned by uh, African Americans. So thank you for that answer. You're welcome. Thank you, Miss Franklin. Uh, we're going to call on Val McLeod. Uh, if I said that correctly, has a question. Their hand is raised up. Val, can you unmute yes. and ask your question? Yes, ma'am. I hope you can hear me. Can you yes. Hear me? Hi. How are you, Ms. McLeod? Oh, thank you. Hi. Thank you so much. This is an amazing uh, forum. I'm so excited about the opportunity. We have a unique situation in our company, and I wanted to figure out how to navigate around it because we can figure it out. Is as the the company is 100 percent African American owned or organic health and wellness company, 100 percent. But when you were talking about the officer, the 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 leadership roles, of uh, what if uh, the the like for example, we just appointed a a new president, but uh, the president's percentage of ownership, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how to figure that part out. If the owner is not in that leadership role, how do you, you know, kind of you know, reconcile those two issues. So first we have to determine what the president's um, percentage is. I mean, in order for you to move forward with the application, um, two things, F they have to be an ethnic minority um, yes. and they cannot, cannot own operator control less than 51% of the business. So that is what would uh, be required before we could move forward with, with um, determining anything. Um, in regards to, um, you know, being qualified for certification. Okay, so then it sounds like maybe a solution may be in part me for, and I, we can have a longer conversation offline. But to to that, in terms of the principal ownership, that person would have to just have a leadership role in the company. Would that satisfy it? Yeah, one of one of the roles that I mentioned, um, either CEO, president, um, chairman or principal. So he would have to demonstrate that, you know, he, he has that one of those positions um, and also his his ownership percentage in voting stock or whatever else he has um, to show that he is actually the person who has the highest designated title in the company. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. All right. Next Ms. Franklin, question. we're going to call on Heather Bivens. They okay. have hand raised. Yes. Hi, Ms. Franklin. Thank you for your time. Um, this may be a little bit early in your seminar process, but before I go any further, I have a casting company in Atlanta. So my question to you is how involved is the Georgia Minority Supplier Development Council involved in productions that come to Atlanta? Because a lot of times when I look at these certifications, it's more geared to like, I would say like the industrial, like transportation or product. Whereas, you know, as you know, like the entertainment industry here is a $9 billion industry. We have several companies such as Netflix and Disney that come. So are you all in flux or in communications with these studios that are coming here? So they're looking into minority owned production companies and casting companies, or is that an area that you all are not necessarily connected with? Ms. Franklin, can I answer that? Uh, Ms. Yes, I was just going to say, Ms. Oliver, please, would you mind? Well, um, you. one of our one of our major corporate members is AT&T. And, you know, AT&T owns CNN, ah. Turner, et cetera, et cetera. And I have been involved in many sourcing opportunities, particularly with Turner, where, where they would say, I need to have people who are in the business um, who are uh, certified minorities, and I've always had a challenge in trying to fulfill that. Um, are we involved in all of the studios who who are here in the city of Atlanta? The answer to that is no. Are we involved with the state of Georgia and their economic development group that is very involved with that? And that answer is yes. Also, Disney is a corporate member for the 
um, council that is in Florida. So we are involved in it, but I think um, at, at, though they are our corporate members, should I say, but I think as you get more involved with GMSDC, you will understand that um, this is just a tool in your marketing tool belt. It's not going to open any doors that you don't work to open, but it can help you uh, get some of those doors open. I hope that answered your question, Ms. Bivens. Thank you. Franklin, how many more Thank questions you do you want to, to take right now? I see um, three additional. I'll take hands. one more because I'll take one more because we're approaching almost 340. So okay. I'll take one more. And for those who don't get your questions answered by Ms. Franklin live, if you'll put them in the chat, I'll try to answer them as she's speaking. So uh, I next I want to call on, and I may be pronouncing this incorrectly, ANU. You had your hand up. You have a question. Yes, um, I did, but I figured it out. My, um, it was basically I co-own a business with my husband, and we both are minorities, and we both own fifty percent. So I was just making sure that we could still apply. Okay, very good, very very good. All right, so thank you all for your questions. And again, um, you know, um, I'll also supply my email um, for anyone that wants to. Uh, speak offline or uh, send me any inquiries um, i'll be more than happy i've already to done that for you that franklin okay wonderful franklin thank i've already you. done that for you so we're going to move okay thank you very much so i'm going to move forward with the next section which is ownership information okay so this is more about the company itself so if you see at your uh, upper left hand corner here uh section 21 business structure and acquisition type of legal business structure. So that should be pretty self-explanatory. You'll just select the correct one. Uh, and then moving over to your right, it says the date when the business was started, acquired, purchased, or secured. Now, uh, that's where a lot of times we have some um, conflicts with folks because a lot of times people say, that's the day I opened my doors. Well, no, not exactly. It's the date that is on your certificate from the, sec the Georgia Secretary of State. That is the date that the state of Georgia recognized you as a legal operating entity. Okay, so that is the date that you will enter uh, in this field here. Okay. All right. Acquisition type. Um, did you purchase the business? Did you uh, start the business? Was it a merger, consolidation, or other secured a franchise? You'll just choose this, the correct field. Going right below that. Um, you see the business structures, it gives you a breakdown of each business structure and the tax forms that you should be submitting. Now, I do know with the partnership LLC, a lot of times we'll have single member LLCs. Um, and so what they will do will either supply a 1065 and 1120 or 1120 is and from uh, at some time or another, we have those that will also still be um, filing taxes as a 1040. If for any reason you are submitting a 1040 tax return, which is a personal tax return, you will need to make certain that you include a Schedule C, which is a profit or loss for, from business. And that is for those of you that have been in business one year or more. If you are a startup company, then of course, you would not have a business return. You would only be able to supply a 1040. But if you've been in business a year or more, with that 1040 return, you must submit a Schedule C, which is a profit or loss from business, okay? And then all of the other uh, tax forms are self-explanatory, right? Ownership uh, information, we have all of the roles and the role description so that you can select the correct one um, as it pertains to your business. Um, then we have uh, the names of each of the business owners, their title, ethnic origin, gender, citizenship. Remember, I mentioned that you can only be a citizen by birth or by naturalization. Your years of ownership of that company or in the business. And then your role, your ownership percentage, and your voting. We only also ask that if you're going to put your ownership in, um, information in, just type it in as a whole number. Okay, so if you own 51% of the business, I will tell you right now, your voting should either be more, but it cannot be less. Okay, remember we talked about uh, a control 
that is part of the control. That that voting lets us know how much you control. So again, if you own 51% in the business, your voting cannot be less than 51. However, if your ownership is 100, you cannot your voting cannot be less than 51%. Okay? And then you'll add each owner by pressing or clicking on the plus sign. So as many times as you need to click on it, it'll open up additional fields for you. Okay. And then right below that, section two, three, applicant information. Uh, we ask about your business pre premises. Are they home-based, leased, or owned? Also because you will need to supply the correct documentation to us uh, in the document upload. Then we also ask you, what state are you a legal resident? You will select the correct state. Um, and then for those of you that have assets in other, um, other address other than where the business is operating. So uh, if you have asset sites, asset site address other than your um, business office, you will list it here. And typically most people that would have an asset site address are those that are in um, janitorial or facilities maintenance or those that are in transportation logistics. For those of you that have trucks, you'll probably have an asset site address. Again, if this, if this is not applicable to you, you will simply leave this space blank. Okay, and if there are any other additional facilities, you'll list them as well. Then we ask in section 2-4, managing employees, you'll list your employee's name, title, and ethnic origin. Owner contributions in section 2-5, that is the um, contributions that you have um, made when you began the company. So. That could be um, office furniture, such as desks and um, uh, computers and laptops and things like that. Um, it could also be your real estate. Did you purchase the building? Did you uh, make uh, uh, put out any funds towards rental? All of that can be included in these fields. And then your expertise in years. How many years have you had expertise in your particular field? All right. So this will be a, um, fields for all of the owners in the company if it's just yourself and of course you would only list one if there are any uh licenses that are required for you to um uh operate your business then you would put the license holder name the type and the license number again if it's not applicable to you you leave this blank okay all of the other questions are self-explanatory uh we're going to jump down to the operation and so you will list each name or key employee uh, ba uh, based on the responsibility that each of them have. If you are the sole owner and operator of the company, then you would list your name in each of the fields as required. Okay. And then lastly, parent subsidiary. Uh, we asked, does the applicant have any subsidiaries or affiliates uh, of another firm? Um, has your firm, its parent company, a subsidiary been denied certification um, or, or are you certified by another NMSDC affiliate council? So you would just choose the correct field. And then right below that, we ask, is your company bonded? Either yes or no. If you are bonded, then you will need to supply the surety bond company name as well as the amount of the bond. Okay, and then we'll you'll also need to upload the surety bond letter as part of your um, documentation. Again, if you do not have a surety bond, you'll leave this as no. Okay. We also ask, are you involved in any present or pending lawsuit? Yes or no. If it is yes, then you provide a brief explanation. Okay. Okay. At section two. Um, I'm going to open it up for maybe two questions, Miss Oliver, please. All right. If you have a question, would you please raise your hand? Um, uh, Miss Oliver? Yes. I, how can you get in and ask questions? I haven't been let into the um, to web yet. It's been sitting there waiting on, I guess, waiting on someone to let me in. So I just kind of been patient. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't... Uh, hold on, sir. Let's see. I don't have anyone in the lobby, but uh, sounds like you're in. And, and did you have a question, sir? I, I did. I, I was trying to trying to get in before, and my question was really quick. With companies that have that have uh, certified as um, 
DBE um, companies in other states, there's another process for that. Is that process just registering and being certified in the state of Georgia? So are, are you saying that you are incorporated in another state? Is that it? I, I couldn't really hear I'm in, you. I'm, in, I'm, I'm incorporated in another state. I've gone okay. through the entire um, small disadvantaged business enterprise um, certification process in another state, and then I certified here in Georgia last year. And we've, we've been doing business, but um, how do you become a member? You know, I mean, how do you become a member of your um, organization, or do I need to? Um, it just depends. Are you are you trying to do business with corporations? Um, you know we what are. what is your? We are. I mean, we we do government okay. contracting. You know anywhere. So, but we'd also okay. Like so let let me let me just ask you a couple questions first. Is your business headquartered here in Georgia? It is now. It was started. It in is now. It is located. And have you yes. filed? Have you filed a? Um, a certificate of authority or a certificate of foreign entity with the Secretary of State of Georgia. Yes. Okay, so then you would be you would be able to uh, uh, submit our application because that is one of the documents that you will need. So yeah, you'd be able to go ahead and fill out the application with us. So, so I need to do the entire process again. Yeah, this is a separate process. Yeah, we, we're not affiliated with any other certifying organizations, either municipal or government. Uh, so this is a standalone certification for the National Minority Supplier Development Council. So you would be required to go through our process as well. Got you. Thank you. You're welcome. One more question, please. All right. Uh, what about uh, Anthony M? Anthony M, you have a hand up for a question? I guess not. Uh, Tony, Tonya, Tanya, Landry, your hand up, Tanya Landry. You actually answered my question um, a little bit earlier with one of your, uh, you know, examples. Okay, very good. All right, well, thank you so much. And uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. And I also want to remind people, if you don't get your question answered, I'm trying, I am answering questions in the chat. So you can put your question in the chat and I'll attempt to answer it. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. I really appreciate it. Uh, Is there so, an um, because if I can't get into the, to the, to the, um, <clears throat> the team's meeting, I can't get, uh, submit the questions. Is there an email address? Yes, the email is uh, you can email Fl uh, Florina, F-L-O-R-E-N-A, at gmsdc.org. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think I mentioned earlier about the NAICS code and uh, how important your NAICS codes are uh, in terms of your application. This is directly where we um, identify you for sourcing opportunities. And so a lot of the codes that are here uh, in our portal are pretty much blanket codes. They're very basic or as we could say generic. Um, and so they don't really give a full description of what you do as far as niche or specialty. Um, and so I typically direct folks to the um, U.S. Census Bureau's website to kind of go in there and maybe kind of search around a little bit to see if there are any uh, for any spe uh, specialty codes or drill down codes that they can add um, so that we can better identify you when uh, those opportunities do come up. Um, and but so, for instance, for those of you that when you start the application, um, if you don't know your NAICS code, um, you would start here. And so what you would do, so for instance, if you're in transportation, you would type in the word transportation. Um, and then you'll see there are uh, quite a few uh, codes that come up under transportation. And so <laughs> identify the code that best describes what it is that you transport, whether it be rail, uh, air, or water. Uh, if you're just doing um, trucking, you would probably put all other transportation um, or 
whatever it is. So you would just choose that that particular um, next code that would best describe you. Um, and then I don't know if there's something for logistics as well. So I'm just going to type it in. I'm just giving you guys just an uh, overview of how to go about identifying your your NAICS codes if you don't have it handy. Um, but then this is something else. I don't know if this would actually um, coincide with, with transportation. But basic transportation, um, you'd see the codes here and you'd be able to pull them up. All right. Uh, for those of you that are in, let's say, marketing, I think advertising is probably one of the key words. Um, so then you would put in the word advertising and you would put, see advertising agencies co uh, come up. I don't know what's actually in here, so I'm just um, choosing words arbitrarily to see what will come up. Uh, and then again, there's also marketing as well. But if you want to look at more specific or drill down codes, you can go to U.S. CensusBureau.gov backslash NAICS. And I'll also ask uh, Ms. Oliver if you'd be so gracious to uh, type that in that website. Um, so uh, for those of you that are listening in, if you want to go in, you can um, see the information in the chat. That's www.uscensusbureau.gov backslash NAICS. And if you need me to send that to you, just send me a request to my email as well. Okay. So moving right along. Let's see here. Sometimes I get stuck. Here we go. All right. So it happens when you're live. Okay. So right below that is your business description, right? Really important because. A lot of times, um, you know, when we get these sourcing requests, I might know an MBE and I know what they do, but I can't think on the top of my head. And so my alternative resource or sourcing is to go in and uh, type in keywords. So, for instance, you know, we might get a, a sourcing request for um, uh, trucking, transportation. We want to see if you have a fleet of trucks. You want to see if um, uh, you can do refrigerated services. This is where you'd really tell the story, okay? And so this is where you'd probably say um, um, transportation, um, trucking, and please, I'm going to have a ton of typos because I'm talking and, and typing fleet, um, interstate, refrigerator services or refrigerator trucking, um, long distance hauling, you know, whatever the words are that describe what it is that you do, you would put them in here. And I, all, I, I ask people, please do not put in your, um, your mission statement or, or anything like that, because this is where we're able to, to identify you when we get those opportunities. So it's very important that you have as many keywords that can help us to find you um, when those opportunities come up. I mean, think of it the very same as when you put a resume out into cyberspace. It's, it's finding you based on the keywords that match with whatever they're looking for. So it's the same premise. Uh, so please just be mindful when you're putting in your business description that you're using keywords, okay? Because this is where we're going to do our search. Now, right below that, we have. Um, type of business. So you would just select what you are, whether you are a um, broker or agent, construction con con or contractor, um, and then you'll see there'll be additional fields that'll uh, uh, pull down depending on what you actually select. Okay. Um, distributor, I don't know if there's another field for that. Yes, there is. Manufacturer, manufacturer rep, uh, most people fall between a consultant professional um, or probably a service contractor, right? But you will just go ahead and choose the appropriate uh, type of business that relates to what you offer or your services, right? For those of you in transportation, um, is a sole propri proprietor or firm in the transportation or logistics sector, yes or no? Again, only if this applies to you. For those of you that are and you select yes, it's going to ask your uh, operating status. So whether you're an independent carrier 
or if you're an insurance carrier um, and your operating authorities, whether it be interstate or intrastate. And then you'll also list the commodities that you normally transport um, and your vehicles and equipment, whether they're owned, lease, how many, and the registration number for each one. Okay. So I know that was quite a bit. And so again, um, really quickly, we'll go through um, a couple of questions. So Ms. Oliver, if you please. Sure. Uh, let me see who has their hand raised this time. Uh, Keith Waters, uh, I see your hand is raised. Mr. Waters, are you there? Put his he hand down. He might Let's be muted. Let's go with uh, Felicia McCoy. I see that hand raised. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much. Um, all right, thank you. This is awesome. Ms. McCoy, um, we're having Ms. McCoy, we're having some trouble hearing you. Okay. Sorry. All right. How do I respond now? No, that sounds like you're underwater, Ms. McCoy. I'm going to go to someone underwater. else and come back, come back to you, Ms. McCoy. Ms. Um, McCoy, are you there? I'm going to come back. Uh, no, that still didn't help, Ms. McCoy. I'm going to try Lisa Herbert. Lisa Herbert, okay. can you, uh, we'll come back to Ms. McCoy. Yes, hi, thank you. This is Lisa Herbert. Thank you, Ms. Herbert. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Um, this has been a great presentation so far. I have a question regarding the formation of my business. So I originally started my business in 2015 in New Jersey. However, I relocated here in 2020 and um, I was advised by my um, attorney to not do the foreign entity, but just to kind of restart the business here. So I have, I kept the name. I just have a different tax ID now and obviously had it, you know, registered here in Georgia. So my question is, is my start date on the application 2015 or is it 2020? So that's really uh, a really, not really a tricky question, but I'm sure I'm, it, it makes you kind of a little confused. And so because you are basically starting over, you're not amending anything, um, you would take the date uh, that you submitted your documentation or you received your certificate from the Georgia Secretary of State. So that would be the date that Georgia recognized you as a legal operating entity. Okay, so although, um, because when I contacted Dunn's as well, they told me my Dunn's number wouldn't change, it would stay the same. No, that's fine. But okay. because now you're operating in, in Georgia, you would need the information that's taken from uh, your certificate from the Georgia Secretary of State and not New Jersey. Okay, so then that does not, um, I still would need to submit those tax returns, even though they weren't Georgia tax returns. <laughs> Do you see what I'm going with that? Yes, you can still go ahead and, and submit those returns. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Thank you. That answered my question. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Franklin, we're going to try to see if Ms. McCoy can speak now. Ms. McCoy, can, can you want to try now? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. You're breaking up a little bit, but much more, uh, much more, uh, the audio is a lot better. Okay, awesome. Uh, my question is, my following me, I started my business in 2010, and I, I just reinstated about two months ago. I use the first founding date. Um, I didn't hear all of that. I heard something about the business starting in 2010. Um, did you move from one state to another, or is it? Are you in the same state when you when you started in 2010? I didn't say state. I just got involved. That was it. I just didn't do it. Ms. Franklin, that yeah, question, I can't hear you. It's yeah, that question audible. was asked in the chat, and I believe uh, the okay. question was that she had a business in 2010 that was dissolved, and then it was okay. restarted 12 months ago. Which date should she be using? The new date. Okay, so if you dissolved in 2010, then that is that is done with. So you you would uh, use okay. the, the the most recent date as the for the business. Okay. 
Okay, thank you so you much. To, you want to take another one, Ms. Franklin? I'll take one more. All right, we're going to hear from um, Ms. Young. Faniki Young, am I pronouncing that correctly? Um, yeah, it's Fanike. Fanike. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for um, calling on me. Um, my question is, and I actually asked in the chat, but I did not see an answer. So my apologies if you did answer it. Um, I own multiple businesses where I am, um, I am the 100% owner. And so my question is, can I certify or get certified um, all of my, can I certify all of my businesses or just one? So, so, so what will happen is, um, I mean, you can certify multiple businesses. What will happen is if each each business is operating under a separate federal tax uh, identification number, you need to apply for each business separately. If you have uh, one business and let's say now, I mean, if it's a holding company, we can't certify the holding company itself, but we can certify the other businesses. Um, so thank if you, you have... I'm sorry. I was going to say, no, ma'am, it's not a holding company. They're all three different businesses. And I do, I mean, okay, two, different so then you would, two different things. Okay, so then you'd need to apply for all three businesses separately. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So thank you for all your questions. We're going to move forward uh, to our references and we're going to jump right into our documentation. I just want to be mindful of the time. Because uh, typically this is supposed to be a one hour call and so I don't want to hold anyone much longer than uh, maybe the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, so for those of you that have uh, customers, you'll select one and up to three industries for which your customers fall in. Um, customer references, you'll need to provide three current customer references. If you're a startup and you do not have three, you'll see at the very top there are uh, three fields that say not available you can check those fields. Then we ask for your bank references. This is for business banking, not your personal banking account. Uh, you should all have at least one uh, business banking reference, okay? So you'll list the name of the institution, the bank officer, their title, address, uh, city, state, and uh, zip, and of course, the type of account, all right? We will also ask for your business signature or your banking signature card as part of your documentation. All right. So now we're going to go right into the documentation because that was very simple. And so please read the document instructions very carefully um, as far as uploading. So I will state that when you're uploading documents, let's say there are multiple owners in the company and we ask for driver li driver's licenses for each of the owners. We will ask that you uh, scan all of those driver's licenses together. Um, if there's no addition, if you do not, if you run out of space, we do have miscellaneous spaces as well. But it makes it very easy for me when I go in and do the review uh, to be able to identify all of the owners for their, uh, as far as their driver's licenses. So scan them as one complete document and upload them in that section. All right. Um, you will need to upload all documentation um, as required below. Um, if there's anything that you do not have, you can put NA and provide an explanation. However, there are some documents if you do select NA um, based on the review, I might request additional documents. So just be mindful of that. And we're going to go through the documents so that you know exactly what cannot be excluded or omitted uh, from the document upload, okay? So I remember I talked about um, selecting your business entity, and so this is why. So um, this helps you to know what documents, or it'll actually um, create the, the documents based on your business structure below the required documents. So in this case, most people are either an LLC or a corporation. So for today, I'm going to select an LLC and then you'll see the documents below for LLC. So at the very top, it says all businesses are required to submit, okay? So this is your driver's licenses, birth certificates, passports, resumes, all of those are required for each shareholder or owner, okay? If you need to put them all in a file such as a zip file and upload it that way, 
you can do that as well, as well as a PDF file, okay? We talked about the fictitious business statement. For those of you that are also uh, doing business as any other name than your legal entity name, you would supply that um, uh, DBA form here. If it does not apply to you, you will simply select NA and move forward. Driver's licenses, they are all required for each shareholder and owner. You would need to go ahead and scan all of them as one complete document or a zip file and upload it into the designated space. Proof of U.S. citizenship. Uh, for those of you that are born abroad, you would need to include a certificate of naturalization, okay? Uh, for many of you that are born um, after 1964, your birth certificate or birth record probably will not have your ethnicity listed. If that is the case, um, typically what we will do, uh, we'll take, if your parent or parents are deceased, we will take a, um, a death certificate. Uh, some marriage certificates might have your ethnicity on it. Uh, if you do not have anything, what you will, what we require you to do and what I typically will ask for is for you to type a letter. Uh, in that letter, you're attesting to your ethnicity. You need to list your ethnicity. You'll need to sign off on that and also have it notarized. This becomes a legal binding document, okay? That's for those of you whose birth records do not show your ethnicity. Now, for those of you that are naturalized and born abroad, your certificate of naturalization will list your, your nationality. And so that is how we will base your uh, ethnicity based on your nationality. Okay. Um, for those of you also that have birth certificates in another language, we ask that those birth records be translated in English and also notarized as well. Okay. Current resume is for each shareholder and partner. If you have multiple partners in the business, we require each of their resumes. Please make certain that the resumes reflect your current role in the company that is seeking certification. I know we do have a lot of folks that come in and they might still be working. We do not need your work resume. We need the business resume as it pertains to the company that is seeking certification with your role and title, okay? Two years of business tax returns, okay? So that's your most current tax return. Uh, most people have either filed their 2019 by now, so we'll need 2019 and 2018. If you've been in business less than a year, you will need to supply two years of personal tax returns. For those of you that are filing a 1040 and you've been in business more than a year, you will need to make certain that you include the profit or loss from business, which is the Schedule C with your 1040 form, okay? Uh, if there are multiple partners or shareholders and each of you is um, submitting your personal tax returns, make certain that there is a return for each person, okay? If you've been in business less than a year. If, again, in business a year or more, it is the business tax return. That is what we need to see, okay? Financial statements, profit and loss statements of cash flow and balance sheet. They must be prepared according to GAAP principles or standards, generally accepting accounting principles, and signed by the principal owner, which could either be the principal, the president, or CEO. Okay, that each document has to be signed. If you've been in business less than a year, you will not have all of the documentation for your financial statements. However, we will need to have an opening balance sheet, okay? So that will be required, all right? Moving down, notes payable. If you have any notes payable, uh, that is anything that you owe and you have a written contract, okay? So for instance, uh, lease agreements or anything of that nature, that would be your notes payable. If it's not applicable to you, you will simply select NA. Applicable operating business license and or permits. Business lease agreements. Uh, for those of you that um, have an office, um, for those of you that are home-based, uh, if you own the home, then you would submit a security deed, a title deed, your property taxes, or a lease agreement if you are leasing the home, okay? Occupational license and or business tax receipt. You should have either one or the other. Anyone that is operating a business, 
uh, within a county or jurisdiction needs to have either an occupational license or a business license or business tax receipt. Okay, even if you are a home based business. Okay, equipment rental or purchase agreements, if applicable. Your contract or work history for the past three years, again, if applicable. You will need to include the name, the contact, type of work performed, or type of contract received. Again, only for those that have been in business three years. If you've been in business less than three years, you would simply type NA. Equipment owned or available include a description of your equipment, the year acquired, and current value. This is everyone. So even if you have um, tractor trailers or you have um, uh, janitorial equipment, this is also for those of you that are operating home offices or op operating in a business facility. You'll list your office equipment such as printers, fax machines, cell phones, um, laptops, computers, desktops, office furniture. All of that is considered equipment. OK, so please make certain that you submit that as well or include that as well. Again, we talked about your bonding only if applicable. Bank signature card. We need to know who the uh, signers are on the bank account. OK, uh, they do not if you do not have a um, bank signature card. You can get a letter from your bank. All we need to see is that there's a letter on bank letterhead. Um, and you can just ask them to make certain that they just state who the signers are on the actual account or who the names are on the account. Okay. For those of you that are Native American, we will need your um, Native American blood degree certificate, your tribal or tribal registry letter, tribal role register number, only if applicable. Also, anyone that does submit to me any of those documents as a Native American, uh, what I will do is call up your tribe and verify the information and that you actually exist in their database. I've had instances when people have supplied uh, tribal registry numbers to me and I've called the tribe. They have no documentation of this person whatsoever. So I do verify information. Okay. Um, again, LLC. So we talked about um, your business uh, structure. This is for LLCs. Okay, so we're going to go through the documents for LLCs right now. Certificate of organization. This should be from the Georgia Secretary of State. If you do not know where your certificate is or you do not have one, you will need to get one from the Georgia Secretary of State. If you need to um, get a copy of it, you can go to Georgia Secretary of State gov or org, I believe. Um, and then you'll do a business search. You'll be able to type in your company name. And from there, you'll see filing history. You'll click on the filing history and you'll see your documentation there. There is no fee. So we'll also need the articles of organization as well. That can all be found on the Georgia Secretary of State website under the business search, business or corporation search, right? So for those of you that are uh, LLCs, I know a lot of times you'll say, um, if you're a single member LLC, you do not need an operational agreement by the state of, um, by the state of Georgia. That is absolutely true. However, for NMSDC certification, we will need an operating agreement. Please make certain that when you do select an operating agreement, you can either go and get one done legally uh, through LegalZoom, or you can find a template. It is your choice. I'm not in endorsing either or, okay? So I'm just letting you know how you can go about um, getting one. So that's my disclaimer. Make certain that if you are selecting an uh, operational agreement, that it pertains to your company. So there is language in there that might need to uh, be changed or edited so that it fits or meets your company's um, operation. OK, that's what the operating agreement is. It tells us who the officers are in the company. Will there be any uh, meetings, uh, organizational meetings? Will you be issuing share certificates or not? All of that needs to be stated in your operating agreement. OK, it'll also talk about your voting rights. Uh, all of those things. If there's a board of directors, all of that is should be included in your operating agreement. Okay. 
proof of capital investments. That is the money that you use to start your business. Um, that should also coincide with whatever information you supply to us in the application as well. Um, I just want to state that when I do the desk review, um, I review the documents as a whole. I don't look at each thing separately. So if I look at your um, operating agreement, um, there's something in there that's maybe questionable. I will look at your application to see what you filled out to see what's if it's corresponding. So it's almost like a puzzle that I'm putting together to make sure all of the pieces fit. So be mindful that when you fill out the application and you're supplying documentation, that it's honest, okay? We, we we're expecting integrity here because you will be working with corporate partners and they will also be asking you questions and asking for some of the documentation should you move forward and receive a contract from them, okay? So be mindful of that, okay? Uh, copies of memory or unit certificates. Uh, for those of you that are issuing certificates, again, I mentioned that if you are not, that should be stated clearly in your operating agreement. Okay. Um, minutes of members meetings. Um, this is to identify who the members are in your company and you'll discuss matters in terms of what the business is doing um, or projection of, of what the business is doing. If you're not having any meetings, then again, that should also be stated clearly in your operating agreement. All right. Uh, and then lastly, moving down that last piece of documentation for an entity certificate. That is for those of you that are incorporated in another state outside of Georgia. So for instance, uh, state of Delaware, most a lot of people will be incorporated in the state of Delaware. If that is the case, you will need a foreign entity certificate um, or a fictitious business statement. If that is, I'm sorry, foreign entity certificate or certificate of authority. If it does not apply to you, then you will simply select NA. All right. Um, if there's any documents, if the file is too large and you, are, you don't have enough space, we do have miscellaneous sections provided below and you can upload uh, your documents in the spaces provided. Okay. Um, and then our last section is the declaration. This is the affidavit that you will need to go ahead and print out. Uh, you will also need to sign it, date it. Um, at the present time, we are not requiring um, notarization. However, there are online notaries available. Um, you can also uh, go to your teller window, um, tell them you have a document that needs to be notarized. There are some uh, banks now that are, are going back to notarization. So um, I don't know how long we'll have it lifted where we're not uh, requiring notarization. But in the meantime, if you can, please go ahead and get your document notarized. You'll see at the very bottom here, it says, I acknowledge that you'll print a copy. You need to check that field. If not, it's going to show an error in this field and you will not be able to submit the application. Once you check off the field, you'll print out the, the declaration. You'll sign it, have it notarized, upload it back into the space provided here. Once you finish with all of the documentation, please make certain that you always hit save after each upload. Otherwise, when you go in uh, to submit the application, if the documents are not saved, then nothing will be there. OK, after you've saved the application, then you will hit submit. There will be a live button that will uh, say submit and that will prompt you to the payment page. You'll be able to pay using a major credit card, right? So this concludes the um, presentation today. Again, my name is Sanji Franklin. I'm the certification manager at GMSDC. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. I'll be more than happy to respond to you. Uh, please do give me at least 48 hours to respond, okay? So I do get a lot of uh, inquiries that come in throughout the day. And also I'm processing applications. So my day is quite busy. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for being on the call today. I look forward to receiving your application. And as always, we are I'm very thankful to have Ms. Florina Oliver, our Vice President of Operations on the presentation who has assisted me today uh, with taking your questions. So thank you. And so um, all, all of you, thank you again. Please be safe. And again, send me your questions. So this is the end of the call. 
I look forward to hearing you.